Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Very good. Thank you. All right. So I'm looking at the official UFC rankings I have right up here in front of me. They still have you listed at number nine. So you're top ten in the lightweight division. What was it about the welterweight division now in this matchup that uh, made you guys want to sign up for it? Yeah, I think for me to compete at lightweight, it's been pretty hard. Um, I'll be 39 in October, and uh, I feel good at welterweight. I fought on this division before. I fought for the title in that division, went distance with the champion. And, and um, yeah, I, I decided to make the, move, make the move, you know, move up, and that's the way that I'm going to be, be competing now on. Okay, so a win in, uh, in, in the main event on Saturday would obviously put you in the top ten of welterweight. It sounds like you're saying you wouldn't go back down to lightweight again. This is official? Yeah, that's official. Uh, if, if I have a fight that, like a super fight, that I'm going to make a very good amount of money, I'll do that. And I see that I still have uh, this fight on Saturday and six more under my contract. I could tell you if, I, if, if it, it was a lightweight fight, I could maybe fight three more times, four more times, to be honest with you. It's just too hard on my body. And uh, I think I want to wait. I can go longer. I can uh, extend my career more. And you mentioned going five rounds um, with the champ. I was there in San Antonio, and I thought it was, you know, you're one of the best strikers in the UFC, um, best boxers. And, you know, Leon is known as one of the best, but he wasn't willing to really trade with you. He wanted to work a lot in the clinch and work a lot against the cage. Uh, this says a lot about your striking. Do you think that Vincent Luque takes the same approach? Uh, yeah, he could, he could, but, like, it's hard to uh, – I watch, you know, like, watching all his fights, he always comes to trade. Yeah, he gets hits a lot, too, and uh, he takes punch, so I, I will take advantage of it. And, uh, yeah, but, like, I'm ready for uh, any situation. I've been working a lot on my clean shoe, a lot of my ground game, wrestling, with Team Nova Union. It's been great for me being in Brazil for, you know, the last, past two and a half years. But, yeah, he could. He could take that route. Like we mentioned, you fought the champion. You also fought the, the newest uh, challenger in Kobe Covington. So I just wonder if you have any predictions for the welterweight title fight. Yeah, I think uh, um, it's a very tough matchup. Um, I would say like 60, 40, like maybe 60% of chance for Kobe win this fight. I, I gave Kobe a slightly advantage, you know, his uh, wrestling skills, and uh, he got a pretty uh, good stand-up too, but I think he's going to uh, mix it up more with the takedowns than Usman did, and he's going to... Uh, he have better chance than than Leon Edwards. And uh, just one more for me. Um, as I mentioned, you know you're one of the best boxers in the UFC. Um, two of your former opponents fought this past weekend in boxing. I want to know what your thoughts are on MMA fighters, particularly UFC fighters, um, who are kind of better days are behind them, trying to go and box. Uh, they don't. They haven't really made a great showing. What? What? Do you agree with that statement, or what's your opinion? Yeah, who that was Nate Diaz? Who else? Nate Diaz and uh, Jeremy Stevens was also on the card. Uh, he was on the card. Yeah, uh, man, I think um, MMA is too hard. You know, it's it's really hard. It's hard to make a career. It's hard to to train for. You have to strike. You have to knee. You have to train on the ground and uh, wrestling everything. So, I think for uh, for guys that make the transition for boxing. It's because it's, it's a much easier uh, training. You, do, you don't have to suffer as much for a boxing camp than you do on an MMA camp. And, um, yeah, and then Nate Diaz and Jake Paul, man, uh, he was way bigger than Nate. And, uh, but, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't, I didn't watch the whole fight. I saw the results, but it wasn't, wasn't a good performance. Thanks. You're welcome. Hi. Um, it's been, I mean, you haven't fought this year yet. I'm wondering, you know, what's been going on in the time that you've been away and how were you able to remain positive that you'd be able to get back here and have a big fight when you got back? Yeah, um, I was planning to fight in March this year, but before my last fight, I was on corticoids and antibiotics like a week before the fight. 
I've been suffering with uh, 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 chronic sinus through allergies and all of that. And I finally, um, February or March this year, I, I got a surgery. I, I, my, my, my doctor said, you have three fractures in your nose. Then I didn't even know of three fractures on my nose. And I, re, I, I fixed my nose and I, 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 I f, you know, I clean all my sinus, all my, you know, everything. Doctor said, hey, how could you fight? Because you can't breathe. How could you sleep? I was having a hard time to sleep as well. And I was like that for years. And I got the surgery this year, and beginning of this year, and boom, all my hormone levels went up, like testosterone, everything else went up, because I'm able to sleep now, and I'm able to get my rest. And that's why it took longer to take this fight, to fight because I got this surgery in the beginning of the year. Have you noticed a difference in training, just being like your cardio and everything being better? Definitely, definitely everything. Uh, I don't feel uh, my body, the soreness anymore. Even when I have a heart session, by the time I get home, I'm able to lay down and sleep for a couple minutes, you know, you know, and at night, I feel like six hours, seven hours just pass, you know, so fast. Because I'm, you know, once I lay down in bed, I just pass out. Because before, I was waking up during the night, drinking water, because I have, you know, breathing through my mouth, getting dry mouth, and drinking water, and going to the bathroom. I couldn't sleep, and uh, I, I could see the difference on this fight camp. It seemed like you maybe moved your family here. Is that correct? That you you've moved full time back to the United States? Yeah, I was in Brazil for almost three years. And uh, live in California for 10 years before Brazil. And we are now in Austin, Texas. What was the decision to do that move? I, I went to Austin back in 2016 with my wife, and she loves it. She liked the city. And we always, I have a good history with Texas, too. I won my belt over there. And uh, I, you know, I, I love the state. And, uh, and, you know, we went there, and we lock, like Austin, and beginning of this year, we went there again, and we saw a house. My wife loved the house, and we put our offer. They accept our offer, so we move. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, RDA. Um, there was a report that came out about, uh, about Vicente's last fight. He suffered a brain bleed. What was your thoughts when you, when, when you saw that? I don't know much about that. I heard off, but I didn't went to, you know, get too much information. Uh, yeah, man, that's the sport. Uh, it's brutal, and I uh, hope he's fully recovered. Um, do you think Conor McGregor fights Michael Chandler? <laughs> he fight whoever he wants, you know. He pick his fight, so uh, I think it will make sense uh, because of the show. Like, by Conor, man, he, you know, like... I, to be honest with you, I don't think Chandler deserved that fight. There's other guys that deserve that fight. But uh, uh, I think it will make sense because of the show and all of that. Usually all the coaches fight on the end of the show, but I don't know if it's the first time the coach didn't fight. I, uh, I don't know the statistics, but it, it will make sense. But I don't think, to be honest with you, nothing against Chandler, but I think there's other guys that deserve that fight. Who do you think deserves that fight, uh, like, other than yourself, obviously, but, like, who else do you think deserves to fight? Ah, uh, man, I think Justin Gaethje is a guy that has fought everybody. Who makes sense he got that fight. Uh, who else? Uh, myself. <laughs> and, yeah, that was only those guys that come to my mind. And, uh, yeah, there's other couple guys that, that's been on the game for very long, uh, uh, deserve that fight. Obviously, you were scheduled to fight Conor many years ago. Um, if you never get to fight him, would that be disappointing? Not at all. I have no frustrations on my career. I'm a very, uh, uh, I feel like I have fulfillment, fulfillment in my career. You know, I have no regrets, no, uh, 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 you know, uh, not disappointed. If it don't, don't happen, don't happen. You know, like back in the days, uh, people start, uh, you know, oh, man, you miss a lot of money, you miss a good payday. But my, my, 
I still have everything I want, you know, I still have a good life, God's been blessing me throughout the years, uh, and if it don't happen, don't happen, if it happened, great, you know, be, that's, uh, I just got disappointed with that because I had never pulled out of, out of, of a fight due injury, and held, holding the belt, having the belt, being the lightweight champ I had to pull out was pretty, uh, not because of the fight money, forget about that, just because of missing the fight, you know. And finally, um, Justin Gaethje, Dustin Poirier fought for the BMF title. Many people think that you are one, one of the biggest BMFs in the sport. Would you like to fight for that title? I don't think I make the requirements for that fight to, to fight for the BMF. Uh, I'm a former champion, so I held the, the interim belt. The, not the interim, but the, the linear belt. So guys that fight for that belt was guys that never, never held the, champ, the championship before. Makes sense. Thank you. Now that you're set in on fighting at welterweight, I know the focus is fully on Vicente Luque, but when you look at the other guys on the welterweight roster, are there any matchups that interest you? Yeah, that is, um, to be honest with you, I don't know who is in the rankings. I know Vicente is number 10, but I, 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 don't, I don't look at the ranks anymore, you know, because back on the days, I've been in UFC for 15 years. It will be a complete 15 years in November. So back on the days, everybody fights everybody, and whoever is keep winning, fought for the, for, uh, go, eventually fight for the title. So my goal now is keep winning my fights. You know, like being a former champion, I know my, the, the way for the belt is shorter. You know, um, I remember back in 2017 when I moved up for the first time and I fought Tarek Safedin in Singapore. By the time I got home, I said, hey, man, I'm way behind the rankings. I'm probably never going to fight for the title of this division. UFC called me. Hey, then I, uh, Damian Maia doesn't want to take the fight with Tyron Woodley. Would you take it? So that's how, it, that's how this game works. So beating Vicente now, everything can happen. Somebody can get hurt, and you know, you know how this game changed. For sure, and like you said, you're approaching 15 years with the UFC. When you look at uh, your resume compared to Vicente, it's obvious that you have the experience side on that. Um, you think the experience is going to help you prevail, come out on top Saturday night? Yeah, definitely. Uh, especially in a five rounds fight, I know uh, that I'm able to push hard five minutes, uh, 25 minutes. I know, I know myself. I've been doing that on fight camp and uh, I'm just happy, man, to be here talking to you guys. Uh, almost 15 years in UFC. Fighting a main event still, you know, after all this, those years having, you know, being on a main event, that's, that's, uh, I'm really happy with that. Thank you. You're welcome. You mentioned the 15 years, but you've been fighting for almost 20 years. You know, you talked about, you know, the, the things you have to do to take care of your body. Do you still enjoy it as much as, as, you've, as you've done in the past? Does it still enjoy as much to fight now? And what keeps you motivated? What motivates you now to keep getting back in there? <clears throat> Yeah, I just feel like when something happened that I'm hurt, uh, if I get hurt or something happened in training, just to, to lay down at home, I feel sick. I just, like, I can't stay at home. I, I, I love training so much. My body needs that. And, um, and people ask me, hey, when, when's the time to stop? And uh, it's hard to tell. Like, I think the first signs you see in your body, when your body's not holding up anymore, I don't see that yet. I think the mind and the heart is the last, you know, like you're going to, because you're going to try to keep pushing, you know, your mind works the same, your heart works the same, even when you're older, but your body starts falling apart and I'm not there yet. And uh, my motivation is my, I got a four years old, man. He's going to be here on the Saturday night. I bring my whole family. I want to give them this opportunity to be, they all asking me, hey, I want to go to your fight, dad. And uh, I'll bring my whole family. So I know this chapter gonna it's gonna finish one day, and I'm not gonna be fighting anymore. Um, and I want them to have that experience to be here on fight week with me, fight night after fight. Uh, I would love to give them this opportunity because uh, this will pass. I know. And currently, over the last couple of years or so, it's been a couple of fights, two fights each year. Is that the pace that you want to keep as well to make sure that you have the time to recover to get back in there? Or are you hoping to maybe step that up and maybe get three fights into a year? Yeah, last year I got three fights. Last year I got three fights. Uh, March, 
July and December was a busy year for me, and I would like to fight another time this year. Um, but I think if I keep fighting uh, in the most like ideal scenario for me, it would be three fights a year. But two, two is fine too, you know. Like I want to fight another time this year. And say if you do get, you know, I think you said you had six fights left on the contract. This Saturday and six more. And then six more. So roughly that would put you maybe fight a couple times a year. That's like 41 years old. Are you hoping to, to sign for another six after that? Or are you just going to see how the body feels at that point? Let's see how the body feels. Uh, you know, like I think uh, uh, six fights is a lot of fights. But uh, we'll see. I, I, you know, I hope, uh, you know, I put on God's hands. He's been blessing me, giving me good health, strength, and and uh, whatever. Uh, if I feel like sign a couple more fights after I get this, deal. but my goal is get this deal done. Okay. And last for me, just looking back at Saturday, what are your keys to the victory? What needs to happen to make sure that you get your arm raised on Saturday? I just push myself and be me, be first, and and do my game, do what I do best, mix it up, uh, uh, push the pace. And um, I know I'm capable of, and, you know, just be myself, you know, use my experience and all the hard work that I did on camp, uh, put on display. Best of luck on Saturday. Thank you. One question. It's obvious that having clarity is so very important to you. What else would you like to accomplish through your passion that you have not yet accomplished? Uh, I think uh, 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 I feel in my heart that uh, I, you know, I reached the top on that on, on a division, a lightweight, um, and I almost won the welterweight title. I think that would be amazing if I, I ever one day fight for the title and win. That would be like uh, uh, amazing for me. I would love to have that opportunity, but. It's hard, but it's not impossible. I know there is a guy upstairs, there, there is a guy upstairs that he points at you. He says, hey, you're going to make it. You're going to do it. You, you do it. I, I'm sure about it. I experienced that, 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 the amazing work before in my life. And, um, of course, being a champion again. But uh, most of all, it's, it's just like uh, uh, I want to be remembered on my legacy that the guys that always step on the cage to fight and put on a great show. And, um, and once I stop fighting, I want to pass this through. You know, like martial arts has changed my life. And I've seen many, it changed many people's life too. And uh, I was thinking, like, Maybe when I stop fighting, what I'm gonna do? Open a business? What I'm gonna do? So I decided to open a gym. You know, I wanna be, I wanna be there, looking people, uh, uh, encouraging people. You know, through experience that I had, and uh, yeah, that's that's what I'm. You know, I'm gonna do. I think fighting life is very short period of your life, and after fight, you have so much thing to do still in life. Congratulations on the gym. Good luck on Saturday. Thank you. Thank you, guys.